ಓಂ ಅಜ್ಞಾನತಿ ಮೀರಾಂಧಸ್ಯ ಜ್ಞಾನಾಂಜನಶಲಾಖಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರುನ್ಮೀಲಿತ ಯೇನ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುವೇ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಮನೋಭೀಷ್ಟ ಸ್ಥಾಪಿತ ಯೇನ ಭೂತಲೆ ಸ್ವಯಂ ರೂಪ ಕದಾಮಹಿಂ ದಾತಿ ಸ್ವಪದಾಂತಿಕ ನಮೋ ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾದಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರೇಷ್ಠಾ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಿಧಿ ನಾಮಿನೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ದೇವೆ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಣೆ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ದೇಶ ತಾರಣೆ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತಿಕ ದಾಧರ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸಾದಿ ಗೌರ ಭಕ್ತವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರಿ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರಿ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರಿ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ಜಯ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಜಯ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಜಯ ದ್ವೈತ ಚಂದ್ರ ಜಯ ಗೌರ ಭಕ್ತ ಬೃಂದ ಸೊ ವಿ ರೀಡಿಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಭಾಗವತ್ ದ ವಂಡರ್ಫುಲ್ ಮ್ಯಾಗ್ನಮ್ ಓಪಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಶ್ರೀಲ ಬೃಂದಾವನ್ ದಾಸ್ ಠಾಕೂರ್ ಹೂಸ್ ದಿ ಇನ್ಕಾರ್ನೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ವ್ಯಾಸದೇವ್ ಹಿಮ್ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ವಾಸ್ ಗಿವನ್ ದಿಸ್ ವೆರಿ ವಂಡರ್ಫುಲ್ ಎಪಿಕ್ ವರ್ಕ್ ಆಫ್ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಭಾಗವತ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕ್ರೈಬಿಂಗ್ ದ ಪಾಸ್ಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಮಹಾಪ್ರಭು ಅಂಡ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಅಸೋಸಿಯೇಟ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ವಿ ಆರ್ ರೀಡಿಂಗ್ ದಿ ಆದಿ ಖಂಡ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಬುಕ್ chapter 9 text 42 43 and 44 today ei mata jata jata avatar lila sab anukarana kariya kare khela in this way nityananda and his friends imitated the past times of the various incarnation ಕೋನ ದಿನ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಹೊಯ್ಯಾವಾನ್ ಬಲಿರಾಜ ಕರಿ ಛಲೆ ತಹಾನ ಭುವನ್ ಒನ್ ಡೇ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಡ್ರೆಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ವಾಮನ್ ದೇವ್ ಅಂಡ್ ವೆನ್ ಟು ಚೀಟ್ ಬಲಿ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಔಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಕಿಂಗ್ಡಮ್ ವಿಚ್ ಕವರ್ಡ್ ದ ತ್ರೀ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ಸ್ ದ ವರ್ಡ್ ಛಲೆ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಪರ್ಪೋರ್ಟ್ ಬಾಯ್ ಶಿಲ ಪ್ರಭುಪಾದ್ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಸಿದ್ಧಾಂತ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ಠಾಕೂರ್ ದ ವರ್ಡ್ ಛಲೆ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಟು ಡಿಸೀವ್ ಆರ್ ಟು ಚೀಟ್ the word bhuvana refers to the three planetary systems for a description of how vaman cheated bali maharaj out of the three worlds one should read shrimad bhagavatam canto 8 chapter 18 to 23 vriddha kache shukra rupe ke hamana kare bikhalaye chade prabhu sheshatar shire someone played the role of the aged or aged shukracharya who forbid bali from giving the three steps after accepting the gift the lord placed his last step on the head of bali maharaj purport the word vriddhakache means acting or dressing like an old man the word mana is formed by the combination of ma indicating to show man or respect and na means no thus prohibiting or forbidding for the description of shukracharya's prohibition to bali maharaj one should see shrimad bhagavatam 8 19 30 to 43 and 8 21 to 15 the phrase chade tar shire means climbed on the his on his head in other words after punishing and freeing bali from bondage the lord accepted service as bali's doorman in this regard one should refer to the shrimad bhagavatam 8 22 35 and 8 23 6 and 10 gurave gaur chandraye radhikaye tadalaye krishnaye krishna bhaktaye tad bhaktaye namo namaha in this section of shri chaitanya bhagavat we see our beloved lord shri nityananda prabhu enacting the past times of the lord and very specifically in the section that we read today nityananda prabhu is performing dramas with his friends enacting the past time of vamandev we know shri vamandev as one of the 10 incarnations in the dashavatar and very famously glorified by jaydev goswami in his dashavatar stotra chalayasi vikramane bali madbhuta vamana pada nakha neera janita jana pavana keshava drita vamana roopa jay jagadish hare jaydev goswami describes vaman as the incarnation of shri hari keshava drita keshava shri krishna himself became vaman and chalayasi vikramane through his very um wonderful interactions and big long steps chalayasi he cheated bali maharaj chalayasi vikramane balim adbhuta vamana through this very uh, wonderful incarnation of vaman why wonderful because he came very small and became very big 
So Shastra always says Ano Aniyan Mahato Mahiyan that Krishna is smaller than the smallest yet larger than the largest. But only in incarnations like Matsya and Vaman can we see in the same incarnation he, be, he starts off from being smaller than the smallest and becomes larger than the largest. In other incarnations you can see this. It's not that Narsinga Dev came like a small you know, mosquito and then he became Narsinga. It didn't happen like that. He came in his uh, ferocious form and the size did not change. He came, he did, he conquered and he left. So the size remained the same. Even we can see in Rama Avatar and Krishna Avatar, even in Krishna Leela, we can see Krishna's size doesn't change. Right? Irrespective of whatever he does, whether he has to kill uh, Putana or Shakatasur or Trinavarta, his size doesn't change. He becomes heavier. Quite fascinating. Krishna becomes lighter and Krishna becomes heavier, but there's no change in the dimension. Srila Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur says, this is the proof that Krishna is the root of all incarnations. Because other incarnations, when they have to achieve something, they have to become big or they have to become small. But Krishna, with the same dimension, with the same strength, with the same ability and the same um, form, he can do everything. To prove to Mother Yashoda that her breast milk is working and he's becoming strong, that he's very healthy, his hunger appetite is good. Instead of just drinking the milk of Putana, he even sucked her life hair out to show that <laughs> she came to give milk, but I have more capacity to drink more than that. Oh, Mother Yashoda, your milk in my body is working. I'm becoming strong. Look, my lips are so strong that I can show the prowess of my lips by killing Putana. Then he shows the power of his forearm and his elbow by killing Trinavarta. He shows Mother Yashoda the power of his feet by kicking Shakatasur. And in this way, little by little by little, he shows Mother Yashoda all the power potency in all the limbs of his body by killing different demons. So different demons came to Brindavan only so that Krishna can prove to Mother Yashoda that different limbs of his body are strong. For Dhenukasur, he was showing how his ball and socket joint is working by swallowing him away. <laughs> and for uh, Keshi, he's putting his hand inside. And for Aghasur, he is going completely inside to show that his whole body is so powerful. That even when it's trapped in the mouth of a snake or trapped by a snake in the form of Kaliya, Krishna still has the power. Without changing the dimensions in his body, he can achieve everything. In the Trinavartha Leela also, we can see that he becomes light initially. Then he becomes very heavy so that Mother Yashoda puts him down. And when he is put down, then Trinavartha has to lift. So Krishna becomes very light again. So Trinavarta lifts Krishna up and then when he sees that Trinavarta has gone very far away beyond what Krishna wanted to go, then he becomes heavy again and Trinavarta comes down crashing. Right? So Chakravarti Pad writes that Krishna without changing dimensions in his body can increase or decrease his weight. And that is quite fascinating. For us, our weight increases as we grow older or let's say we, uh, we age automatically right from our infanthood to boyhood to youth. Our weight increases because our dimensions also increase, height increases, etc. But for Krishna with the same shape and size, the weight increases or decreases. So in this case, we see Vamandev becomes Urukram. He becomes Trivikram. These names are very famous. Trivikram or Urukram. Uru means great and Krama means steps. Krama can also mean activities. He who performed great activities by taking great steps is Urukrama or Tri Vikrama. Tri means three and Vi means Vishesha Rupena and Krama means steps. So he who took three special big steps, such steps nobody can take. That is Tri Vikrama or Vikrama also means valor, uh, which means heroic uh, presentation. So he who through three steps displayed his valor without fighting a battle, he conquered the demons or the king of demons. They surrendered completely through their king, Bali Maharaj. So this is Trivikram. But initially he came as Vaman. He came as dwarf. He came smaller than the usual size <laughs> as a dwarf and then ended up becoming bigger than the biggest size. The biggest size is the universe and he became bigger than that because he could map even the universes through his feet. So in this section, we can see Nityananda Ram is enacting through dramatic performances the pastime of Vamande. Srila Jiva Goswami in his very celebrated Harinam Amrita Vyakaranam 
the book on um, sanskrit grammar has used these terms but he has used them in a very specific beautiful usage you see in sanskrit there are two kinds of words two kinds of syllables aksharam the first akshar the first syllable is called rasva and the second is called dirgha hmm? rasva means small and dirgha means big like for example in sanskrit the wo- the syllable a is rasva but a is dirgha similarly e is rasva e is dirgha so what are they generally called they are also called laghu and guru laghu means short small and guru means big syllable but shila jiva goswami in his sanskrit grammatical book um, harinam amrita vyakaranam he describes the word rasva or dirgha has nothing to do with krishna or the word laghu and guru have nothing to do with krishna so he renames the whole structure the shorter syllable he calls it vaman <laughs> and the longer syllable he calls it trivikram purvo vamanah paras trivikramah these are the sutras in harinam amrita vyakaranam that every short syllable is called vaman and every long syllable is called trivikram hmm? like for example u is a vaman akshar according to traditional sanskrit grammar they will call it rasva or they will call it laghu but shila jiva goswami calls it vaman vaman akshar u is vaman but u is trivikram it's the bigger one and he says very interestingly he says it's the same syllable which has expanded <laughs> it is a which has become a with an extra matra it is e which has become e it is u which has become u so similarly it is according to vaman avatar also it's not that a different incarnation came as trivikram that same vaman only expanded and became trivikram so shila jiva goswami pad uses that wonderful logic and he uses one more sutra this can be little technical um if we get it no problem if we don't get it also govinda and namo namaha no problem it's just uh, for record purpose shila jiva goswami pad writes satsangat purvo vamano pi guru this is the sutra what does this mean it means that in sanskrit there are many um, conjunct syllables they are called samyukta aksharani which means let's say for example the word, the syllable ksha ksha right uh when you have to use the word uh, vriksha you you syllab- you use the syllable ksha right so this is a samyukta akshar samyukta akshar means two akshars are coming together when you when you pronounce ksha what are the two syllables ka and sha come together ksha right similarly when you use the syllable pra that's a samyukta akshar pa and ra are coming together two sounds are coming together now um in traditional sanskrit it is called a samyukta akshar right or conjunct syllable but shila jiva goswami pad says no that has nothing to do with krishna the two syllables are meeting right so we should call them satsanga because there is meeting <laughs> satsanga means meeting of vaishnavas right so two syllables when they meet it is called satsanga and according to sanskrit rule as a rule when a syllable comes before a Uh, a conjunct syllable like this and if it is a short syllable if it's a laghu akshar it becomes guru automatically now why how we'll forget it just as a rule if there is a conjunct syllable and a normal syllable comes before that because it is coming before a satsanga it comes before a conjunct syllable automatically it becomes a longer syllable so shila jiva goswami pad says isn't that amazing that a very great krishna conscious uh, point has been mentioned what is that satsangat purvo vamanopi guru before satsanga even if the person is short which means he is a vaman after coming to satsang he will become guru he will become big <laughs> even small individual beings before coming to satsang they may be conditioned but after coming to satsang in the association of devotees even small small aksharas even rasva even laghu can become guru <laughs> all the spiritual masters that we have today they started at some point and they came to satsang they came to the association of devotees and then they became guru why we are mentioning this is because this sutra is connected to this past time of vamana and bali so before he met bali maharaj he was vaman <laughs> before the lord himself met bali bali is greatest devotee swayambhu narada shambhu kumara kapilo manu 
प्रहलाद और जनक को भीष्म बलि वैया सखी वयम वन ऑफ द ट्वेल्व महाजन इज बली महाराज सो बिफोर मीटिंग बली हु इज अ ग्रेट साधु सो बिफोर हैविंग सत्संग एसोसिएशन ऑफ अ ग्रेट वैष्णव इवन द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड इज लघु ही इज ऑल्सो वामन बट आफ्टर एसोसिएटिंग विथ सच अ ग्रेट डिवोट इज बली महाराज सत्संगात पूर्व वामन ऑफ ई गुरु इवन वामन इवन ड्वॉफ personality even small akshar as before samyukta akshar satsang can become big akshar so what to speak of the supreme lord he comes as vaman small dwarf incarnation associates with a great devotee called bali and ends up becoming guru jagat guru krishna mande jagat guru or another way to see is vaman associates with bali satsangat purvo before satsanga he was vaman but after satsanga meeting with bali maharaj he becomes urukram he becomes big so this is a <laughs> very wonderful start to the discussion prabhupad saraswati thakur in the purports to this section he advises us to read shrimad bhagavatam and he advises the section that we should read also so following his instruction prabhupad bhakti siddhanta saraswati thakur prabhupad's instruction we will read some verses of shrimad bhagavatam today where this wonderful pastime of vaman and bali is explained of course we may think in our heart that oh i know this pastime right from childhood i have heard and somebody who's from kerala may even think that oh tanavendra mahabali was from kerala only we even celebrate uh, onam <laughs> remembering him so which is all true we may all have heard this pastime many times but we will hear details straight from the lips of shila shukdev goswami so it will be like never before so my request is all of you kindly please open up your copies of shrimad bhagavatam otherwise following this discussion will be difficult so we are going towards the 8th canto chapter 20 text 14 onwards we will be reading the verse and seeing what uh, we can learn or what are some details out of it of course covering the whole past time Uh, is impossible in the time that we have but we'll just take a small piece and together we'll sit and study shrimad bhagavatam and relish what shukdev goswami is describing for those of us who don't have a shrimad bhagavatam you can always um, access that online on vedabase.com and click to shrimad bhagavatam click to canto 8 click to chapter 20 click to verse 14 onwards and here we are reading together shri shukha uvach श्रद्धि शिष्य अनादेशक गुरु शशाप दैव प्रहित सत्यसंधम मनस्वीन जस्ट अ बैकग्राउंड एस टू वेर वी आर इन दैस्ट टाइम बलि महाराज हेज जस्ट फिनिश्ड हिस्स कॉन्वर्जेशन विथ शुक्राचार्य दैत्य गुरु शुक्राचार्य हिज गुरु द स्पिरिचुअल मास्टर ऑफ द असुरस दैत्य द सन ऑफ दिति एंड अफकोर्स वामन देव हेज अपियर्ड टू द सीन and shukracharya is trying his best to convince his disciple not to surrender to krishna actually this service of the spiritual master is to convince the disciple to surrender to krishna but here the spiritual master is convincing his disciple not to surrender to krishna why because shukracharya is thinking my disciple is foolish he is not able to understand he is not able to see <coughs> Yeah, text fourteen, and what we can do is maybe we can put to the advanced uh, view. So we just have the words in front of us. We can just keep reading the words if possible. Hmm? Okay, so we all can see here that Shukracharya, he has uh, tried speaking to Bali Maharaj, and he has told him not to surrender because he um, is concerned that Bali Maharaj is not able to see who has actually come. He is thinking that. Uh, this is a brahmana but it is actually shri hari himself and he has come to take away everything hmm? and shukracharya is thinking that if um, yeah maybe the the worst text can remain so that everybody yeah okay thank you maybe we can keep it in english also if somebody finds it difficult to read in sanskrit um, so in that way we can have it both options thank you thank you so much mataji so shukracharya is thinking if everything is given to vishnu then what dakshina will i get from my disciple <laughs> i also want my pranami 
So better you don't surrender everything. If you want to give, give little, but you keep the rest. And then of course he's saying other things also. What about your family? You have to have some loka dharma. Your raja, you cannot give everything. There will be many more brahmanas who will come, and you have to be equal to everyone. Not give all your property to one person. So he has said many things. But at the end of this whole conversation, Bali Maharaj tells his guru Shukracharya. He says that. Uh, even if god is coming to cheat me as a brahmana this is a wonderful opportunity to for me to offer charity charity must always be offered to the most worthy person who can be more worthy than the supreme lord himself and anyway the supreme lord shri hari is has been the enemy for the whole family because he ended up killing hiranyaksha he ended up killing hiranyakashipu hiranyakashipu's son is pralad pralad's son is virochan virochan's son is me bali so for our family Vishnu has been the greatest threat, and now to ask charity, he himself is coming as a Brahmana so that I don't kill him. Bali Maharaj is saying Brahmanas when they come and ask charity to Kshatriyas, Kshatriyas must protect. Kshatriyas cannot deny the Brahmanas. So Vishnu, if he would have come as a Kshatriya, I could have thought to have some, you know, battle. But he has come as a Brahmana, so it is my duty, according to Varnashrama, to protect my words and protect his uh, desires. and at the same time bali maharaj says that one of the following is possible now one is even if he cheats me i will take a vrat that i will not offend him because offense to a brahmana is the greatest thing that one can do you know the greatest offense one can do i will also make sure i don't get angry i will make sure that i don't speak harsh words bali maharaj says second he says it's possible that he is vishnu and he may defeat me and he may bind me up in battle that is also possible or the third possibility is i may defeat him and i may bind him now why will a devotee speak like this is a question why will he think of defeating and binding the supreme lord our acharyas describe that mother saraswati sits on the tongue of bali maharaj at this point and speaks this to help all of us understand the inner meaning Bali Maharaj is speaking something that Shukracharya is not able to understand. He says, "I will defeat my Lord and bind him through the ropes of love, Prem Pash." Because in this past time, if you see who binds whom, is it that Vaman Dev is binding Bali Maharaj, or is it that Bali Maharaj is binding Vaman Dev? Externally speaking, Vaman Dev binds Bali because Bali Maharaj says, "Yes, I will give you three steps of land," and in two steps, the whole creation is taken. and then finally when there is no place vamandev tells bali you promised me that you will give me three steps but in two steps you are conquered so your words have come asatya therefore i will bind you as a prisoner so this is the external meaning but bali maharaj at that point surrenders his life he tells vamandev you have taken everything from me but you haven't taken me आपने मेरी संपत्ति ले ली आपने मुझे अभी तक स्वीकारा नहीं हे प्रभु दो पग में तो आपने मेरी संपत्ति ले ली अब अपनी संपत्ति भी तो ले लो मैं आपका दास हूं नाउ यू प्लीज एक्सेप्ट मी एंड बाय सेइंग दिस बाय एक्सप्रेसिंग हिज डिवोशन टू वामन देव वामन देव प्लेसेस हिज लोटस फीट ऑन द टॉप ऑफ बली महाराज एंड गिव्स हिम अ प्लेस कॉल्ड सुताल लोक वेयर वामन देव फॉर ऑल टाइम्स टू कम stands as a doorkeeper outside bali maharaj's room so who has bound whom <laughs> vamandev bound bali for some time with ropes but bali maharaj bound vamandev eternally through the ropes of prem prem apash hmm? this is why shripad bilva mangala thakur he says in the uh, chaurashtakam that he says my lord um <coughs> chinatsi goram you are able to cut the ropes of yamapash you are able to cut the ropes of bhavapash repeated birth and death but you cannot cut the ropes of affection that your devotees bind you to that you cannot <laughs> that power you don't have therefore karagrahe vas sada hridaye madiye mad bhakti pasha ih bandhala nischalasan hom krishna he pranaya koti satantare pi sarvasva chaur hridayan nahi mochayami the prayer is my lord i will eternally bind you in the prison house of my heart with ropes of love 
<laughs> Bilva Mangala Thakur is telling Krishna. So here, Shukracharya, when he's trying to convince Bali, Bali Maharaj says, don't worry, I will bind him or he will bind me. <laughs> but I am going to keep my word. I am going to give everything to him. He's a Brahmana. So seeing this, that his disciple, Evam, in this way, looking at his Shishyam. So please follow the Sanskrit words of the 14th verse. Ashraddhitam Shishyam. Shukracharya is seeing that the Shishya is Ashraddhitam, which means he has no faith in the spiritual master. And as a result, instead of Adeshakara, instead of being obedient to the words of the Guru, the disciple is Anadeshakaram, is disobedient. Guru is saying don't surrender and the disciple is disobeying the Guru to surrender to the Supreme Lord. Seeing this, Shashapa Daiva Prahitaha, Satya Sandham Manasvinam. The two uh, adjectives, Satya Sandham and Manasvinam are for Bali Maharaj. Manasvinam means he was fixed in his vow and pure in character. And Satya Sandham, he will never go away from truth. His Holiness Radhanath Swami Maharaj, uh, I heard this from His Grace Adi Gadadar Prabhu. He was mentioning that uh, His, His Holiness Radhanath Swami Maharaj in one initiation class, Maharaj said, just by coming here, getting a new name, taking vows and getting beads, you're not going to make spiritual advancement. Because that anybody can do. Coming and sitting there for two minutes and getting an, <laughs> by saying that I will be the servant of the servant of the servant and taking beads and a new name. said, this anybody can do, Maharaj said. But what vows you take today, with what integrity you keep up to that all your life, that decides the progress that we make. Not those two minutes when we take the vows, but the whole life when we live by those vows. So Satya Sandham, those who live up to their words are very dear to the Lord. Very, very dear to the Lord. Those who take a vrat and they stick to it, they are very dear. Satya vratam, satya param, tri satyam, satya sayonim, nihitam cha satya, satyatmakam tom sharanam prapanna. Bhagavatam describes that the demigods call Krishna in the second chapter of the 10th canto as the abode of all truth. Satyam param dhimahi. Even in the Bhagavad Gita, abhayam sattva samshuddhi, jnana yoga vyavastiti, dhanam damascha yajnascha swadhyaya stapa arjavam, ahimsa satyam akroda tyaga shantira paishunam, daya bhute shvalo luptam mardhavami vachapalam. Krishna says that of all the qualities that attract me, being truthful is one. So because Bali Maharaj was truthful, what is truth? Surrendering to the absolute truth. This is the absolute truth. And if anybody comes in between our surrender to Krishna, it is nice to offer obeisances and disobey hmm, politely. And we can see so many examples for that. Prahlad Maharaj disobeyed his father. Dhru Maharaj disobeyed his mother. Hmm, not Suniti, but Suruchi. Uh, he didn't wait for <laughs> her words that, yes, I have to take one more life in her womb, etc. He didn't wait that long. He just left. Vibhishan, we can see. He didn't listen to his brother. Ravana was trying to brainwash Vibhishan, but it didn't work. Vibhishan was surrounded by Asuras in the headquarters called Lanka, but nothing happened. He was Satya Sandhi. Then we can see gopis. Their husbands were dittering, but the gopis didn't mind. Nagapatni's husband was Kaliya, but still it didn't stop them. Dvijapatnis, the wives of the Brahmanas, the Brahmanas were ritualistic, but they were Premi Bhaktas. They didn't get distracted. And in this case, Bali Maharaj, the spiritual master himself is saying, don't surrender to Krishna. And Bali Maharaj keeps the words of the spiritual master aside and worships Krishna. And seeing that Bali Maharaj was disobedient to the words of the spiritual master, what does the Guru do? Look at the words here. Shashapa. Shap diya unone. He cursed Bali Maharaj. He cursed him. What was the curse that he gave him? That we will see in the next verse, what the curse is. But interestingly, whatever curse he gave was Daiva Prahitaha. You can see the phrase in the third line. Daiva Prahitaha means inspired by Vishnu himself. Why would Vishnu inspire Shukracharya to curse Bali Maharaj? Because Vishnu, Shri Hari, Vaman Dev wanted the glories of Bali to spread in all directions. You see, only when Chandan is 
properly uh, rubbed vigorously rubbed does the full fragrance come out of the sandalwood paste only when the rods of sugar cane go through the blades is the sweet juice inside those sugar cane rods coming out so similarly we can see the flowers also the lotus flowers they have so much beauty inside but only when they have to face the heat of the sun do they open and the beauty is seen so through the example of the sandalwood paste example of sugar cane rod and the example of the lotus we can see that great personalities when they grow they go through trials and tribulations the best in them comes out the best in them comes out you can see any juice any fruit when you squeeze a mango that's when the best thing comes out the juice <laughs> it doesn't get morose but it gives out the best another example can be given when a uh, wind blows on a fire flame in a candle what happens to the candle fire flame gets extinguished right think about it there's a candle with a fire flame on the top and there's wind blowing what's happening gets extinguished but that same fire when it's caught and when it's burning a heap of grass and the breeze comes in what happens the fire gets intense and it starts spreading further so if we are a candle then we will get extinguished when the breeze of trials and tribulations come but when we become the fire on a grass hut or let's say in a heap of grass that same breeze can bring out the best in us right so similarly here why is the curse coming in the life of bali maharaj and daiva prahita why would krishna inspire shukracharya to curse his own disciple because through these five examples that we saw we saw the example of the sandalwood uh, tree we saw the example of uh, sugarcane rod we saw the example of lotus we saw the example of uh, fire etc through all these we saw the example of the mango fruit through all these examples we can see when great personalities are crushed the best part in them comes out another example could be when you throw stones on a mango tree it gives out the best that it has that is the mango fruit till then it doesn't but when somebody puts them through trial and tribulation of throwing and facing the pelting of stones it gives out the best that it has so the best response is seen by great vaishnavas in the lives of great vaishnavas through the times of difficulty this is why queen kunti says bipada santu na shashwat tatra tatra jagat guru bhavato darshanam yat syat apunar bhava darshanam that let me go again and again through these trials and tribulations so that i can remember you and my consciousness will get more and more blossomed so here krishna wanted the fame of bali maharaj to spread far and wide to show the world that a great vaishnav like bali even when he is cursed by his own spiritual master he doesn't say oh gurudev i'm sorry you know somehow i forgot that you're my guru and i should listen to you i should be obedient no he goes to disobey his guru even when the guru curses him that you will lose everything still he continues to surrender to krishna he still continues to surrender to krishna in the bhagavatam there is a verse tiraskrita vipralabdha shapta kshipta hata api nasya tat pratikurvanti tad bhakta prabhavo pihi that the essence is pure vaishnavas are such <clears throat> tiraskrita even when they are criticized vipralabdha even when they are cheated shapta even when they are cursed kshipta even when they are ignored and neglected hata api even when they are on the verge of being killed nasya tat pratikurvanti they don't retaliate sant hridaya navanita samana the hearts of pure vaishnavas are like butter it always melts hmm? there is no question of vengeance and retaliation and uh, revenge these words don't exist in the uh, heart of a vaishnav tiraskrita even when they are uh, criticized so many examples can be given haridas thakur was beaten black and blue jesus christ was crucified hmm? on the level of hata api hmm? jada bharat was almost being killed by the tribals vipralabdha cheated pandavas were cheated tiraskrita vipralabdha shapta parikshit maharaj was cursed right 
<laughs> Durvasa Muni came to curse and even kill Maharaj Ambarish. And same in this case, Bali Maharaj is being cursed by his own guru. But he didn't, doesn't take one step ahead. Uh, doesn't take one step ahead in the direction of the words of the guru. Hmm? But moves ahead so that the Lord can take his, take his steps. <laughs> Let's see what the curse was. Next verse, 15. Dridam pandita manyajnya stabdos yasmadu pekshaya machasana diko yastvam achirad brashya se shriyaha. So the, the words of Shukracharya are as follows. He says, Dridam, eh hey, Bali, Dridam, you seem to be very fixed. You have decided what you want to do and you will do. Sometimes we say, right? Mujhe kyon pooch rahe ho? Tumne, tum to dridho. Tumne to jaan liya kya karna hai. You have decided them. Why you are even asking me? Some people are like that. They will ask the same question in different classes, in different ways, because they want to hear what they want to hear. <laughs> right? And we are all like that. It's not that we want to know the answer, but we want the speaker to say what we want to hear. So till the time we don't hear that, we will flip and flap. So Dridam, Shukracharya is telling Bali, Bali Maharaj, Drid ho aap. Aapne to Dridta purvak ye niyam le liya hai. You have decided. You are very Drid. Hmm? Very um, fixed. Not in a good way. It's a curse. So you seem to be very arrogantly fixed. And Panditamani. Here I am your guru. I am the one who revived you. As, as we know in the story, Shukracharya revives Bali Maharaj. He revives Bali Maharaj. So for all the devotees, this is a very, very, very interesting point. Shukracharya is the one who gave Bali Maharaj long life. So how does that um, connect to our lives? Shukracharya represents Shukra. And Shukra represents semen or Virya Shakti. The more one retains through Brahmacharya, one will live long <laughs> through this pastime. It is Shukracharya who gives long life to Bali. And the more one tries to enjoy this world, death is fast approaching. The more one enjoys in the youth, the more one will terribly suffer in one's old age. So, Brahmacharya is not meant only for Brahmacharis. It's meant for Grihasthas. It's meant for Vanaprasthis. It's meant for Sanyasis. For everybody. So, <clears throat> um, even Lord Shiva has said that by being Brahmachari, you know, by controlling our senses, uh, Jeevanam Bindu Rakshanath, one will live a long, long life by... Um, holding on to Brahmacharya, especially for all the youth who are listening. This is a um, very important point from Shastra. Maranam bindu patena, jivanam bindu rakshanat. One will die quicker and will have more diseases by enjoying uh, sexual indulgence. And the more one is um, dridabrata, the more one is self-controlled, the longer one lives. So why did we say that? We said that because it was Shukracharya who gave long life to Bali. And Shukracharya represents Shukra or Venus astrologically. So here the curse to Bali Maharaj is Panditamani. I am the one who gave you life. I am your guru and you think you are a Pandit. Apne aapko Pandit maante ho. Pahli baat to drid ho. Dusri baat Panditamani. First of all, you are fixed. You, are, you have decided. You, do, you are not coming to me asking what to do. Seems like I am the disciple and you are the guru. <laughs> And Pandita Mani, you are considering yourself to be a very great Pandit. But actually, who are you? Look what Shukracharya tells Bali. Ajnya. Nya means Jnanam, to know. And Ajnya means Ajnani, foolish. He says, you are actually foolish, but you think you are a very big Pandit. Shukracharya is telling Danavendra Mahabali. Bali Maharaj, the great Mahajan, the grandson of Prahlad Maharaj is listening to these words. Now the fourth thing he says is Thapda. He says no amount of pravachan, no amount of association, no amount of influence will ever change your mind. You're a gone case. You're obstinate. You're very arrogant. And so how many adjectives use? Dridam, 
Panditamani, Adnyaha, Stabdaha, now the fifth thing. Asmat Upekshaya, Meri Baton ko kaat kar Upeksha kar rahe ho. You have the audacity to disobey me, to cut my words, and Mad Shasana Atigaha. And you are able, you are going beyond the Lakshman Rekha that I have crossed for you. I have put a Lakshman Rekha for you that if you want to give, give so much, but not everything. First of all, best if you don't give only. Just say no. And Shukracharya tells Bali Maharaj different ways by which he can come out of the situation. He says, yes, you said you will give three, uh, you know, land held by three steps of foot. But a vrat is considered to be a vrat only when there is Om chanted before the vrat. And you didn't chant, so it is technically not considered to be a vrat. You can come out. There is no, uh, there is no um, uh, repercussion or there is no reaction for not being able to do it. Because there was no Omkar chanted before. Shukracharya also tells him, there are times when even if you speak lies, it is okay. Like if you have to get somebody married off, it's like Shukracharya says this example in the Bhagavatam. To avoid Daridrata, poverty. And in many such cases, there are verses which describe that. Shukracharya says in such cases, even if you lie, there is no problem. There is no problem. And here by giving out everything, you're going to come to Daridrata. So therefore, you can get out of the situation by not offering him. That's fine. I have said these as the rules, but mat shasana atigaha. Mere shasana ke virudh jakar aap aage nikal rahe ho. You are going ati. Ga means to go. Ati ga means you are going beyond mat shasana. My discipline. How much lines I have put for you, you are going beyond that. And therefore, oh Bali, I curse you. What is the curse? Achirad. Bhrashya se Shriyaha. Shriyaha means wealth. Aap Shri arthat wealth se bhrasht rahe. Kab achirat abhi hi. The word chira means for a long time. Hai na? But a chira means not in the future but right now. Achirat. Now itself I curse you. Bhrashya se Shriyaha. May all your wealth be taken away. Now please tell me. Will the Lord like to listen to such kind of uh, curse uttered to his dear devotee in front of actually thousands and thousands of people are watching this because Bali Maharaj uh, talking to Shukracharya and Vamandev appearing is a very interesting long section in Srimad Bhagavatam in the 8th canto and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of members are watching. There are people from upper, middle and lower planets who are coming and watching this whole scene that is happening. So in front of all of them, when Bali Maharaj is cursed like that, you think Vamandev will be very pleased? Immediately what Vamandev does is, he instructs Mother Saraswati to flip this whole verse as glorification. So that the ether is not contaminated by Vaishnava Parad. <laughs> Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur has given the other meaning of this verse. How it caused, how it is the source of all glorification. So maybe can we zoom into the verse, Mataji? If this just this one, Dridam Pandita Manatnya. So everybody can see the words and appreciate Mother Saraswati's flipping and how wonderfully she has glorified the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, maybe just zoom into the words of the verse, Mataji. Just the words, not the yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you can go a little more. So everybody can nicely see the words. Yeah. So Mother Saraswati says, Shukracharya glorified Bali Maharaj. Aha, oh dear disciple, kitna, kitne drid ho tum. <laughs> Guru is coming and saying, don't surrender to Krishna. And Guru is ready to curse. But all glories, all glories to such a disciple. Who is so drida, who is so fixed that even when the spiritual master is cursing, he doesn't say, sorry, uh, I'm really sorry. I didn't recognize my position as your disciple and I'm supposed to follow whatever you say. Drida. He's standing his ground. He is standing his ground. Second, Panditamani. Shukracharya is telling Bali Maharaj, 
Now, this is the other meaning, okay? So, please don't get confused with the first meaning. This is the second meaning going on. So, Shukracharya is glorifying Bali Maharaj by saying, Pandita Mani, what you are going to do now, oh dear disciple, even Pandits will give their Samman to you. Pandit bhi jinko maan dete hain, wo ho aap, Pandita Mani. <laughs> In the first meaning, the word Pandita Mani meant you are Pandita Mani. Apne aap ko Pandit maan rahe ho. You are considering yourself to be a Pandit. But in the second meaning, Oh Bali, your sacrifice is so great that even great Pandits will offer their maan, their samman, their respect to you. <laughs> Third word, Ajnyaha. The syllable Nya means to know and A means no. So in the previous meaning, it meant someone who didn't know. But in this meaning, it means Shukracharya is telling Bali Maharaj, Oh dear disciple, there is nothing that you don't know. Nya mane janna. A mane nahi. Aisa aur kuch bachai nahi janne yogya. Aap jo bhakti ke star par baithe hain, isse badkar kuch janne yogya hai nahi. Oh Bali Maharaj, there is nothing more for you to learn. I as the teacher, what can I teach you more? <laughs> If somebody is able to, at the time of crisis, surrender to Krishna like this, that you don't worry about anything. You don't worry about the curse from the spiritual master. You don't worry about the public defamation in front of everyone. Now, Vamande will bind you with ropes. He will send you to Sutal Lok. Everybody is watching for all times to come. And you don't worry absolutely and still you are surrendering your heart. What more is there for you to learn? What more grantha or class do you have to hear? You are on the highest stage of devotion. Oh, Bali, Ajnya. Or ab janne yogya kuch bacha hi nahi. Aap to sab kuch jante ho. You know everything. Fourth, Stabda. Stabda asi. Your Stabda. Stabda means he who doesn't bow down before anyone. Now, in the first meaning, it meant somebody who's arrogant. Kini ke saamne jhukte nahi, bahut ghamandi hai. Somebody who's very arrogant, he doesn't bow down before anyone. But in the second meaning, the devotional glorificatory meaning, it means, Stabdaha, O Bali, you are not bowing down to pressure. You are not bowing down to loka dharma. You are not bowing down to varnashram dharma. You are not bowing down to guru shishya dharma. You are not bowing down to rajya dharma. You are only bowing down to one personality, that is Shri Hari. How glorious is that? How glorious. One time one man came to Prabhupada and he said, I don't like to bow my head before any God. I don't, in fact, I don't bow down my head in front of anybody. Prabhupada said, how do you cut your hair? He said, I go to the barber. So Prabhupada said, then when he cuts your hair on the back, what do you do? He said, I bow my head. Prabhupada said, when you can bow your head to barber, why not bow down to Krishna? <laughs> <laughs> for cutting your hair, if you're ready to bow down to a barber, why can't you bow down to Krishna who's ready to cut material existence? Pranam ki mahima hai. Aparampar mahima. There is so much glorification to offering obeisances to Krishna. So here by saying stabdosi, your stabdaha, Bali Maharaj is glorifying. Uh, Shukdev goes, um, please forgive me. Shukracharya is glorifying Bali Maharaj that you're so fixed that you don't bow down before anyone except Shri Hari. And this is giving joy to my heart. The fifth term is Asmad Upekshaya. You have uh, neglected me. Hmm? You have neglected me. Why neglected me? Because I am speaking about Laukik Dharma. I am speaking about uh, you are Kshatriya, he is Brahmana, you should keep money, you should not give so much. I am speaking about all this. But you are talking on the highest Dharma, which is Jaiva Dharma. That the duty of the soul is to surrender everything to Shri Hari. So I am speaking about lower things and Bali, you are following higher things. Therefore, it is fine for you to neglect what I am saying. Because I am speaking about second or third floor and you are talking about 10th floor. So to go to 10th floor, you have to cross, cross through second and third. <laughs> so Madhupekshaya, you have rejected and neglected my words for a higher cause. And this is certainly great. And Mad Shasana Atigaha. I am telling you to give less or not give, but you want to give completely without keeping anything for yourself. This selflessness of yours, O oh Bali, has won my heart. And therefore, I bless you. In the previous uh, interpretation, the last line was a curse. 
वॉट वॉज इट अचिरात भ्रश्य से श्रेय अचिरात मीन नाउ इट सेल्फ भ्रश्य से मे यू फॉल डाउन श्रेय फ्रॉम ऑल योर ऑपिलस राइट बट इन दिस ग्लोरिफिकेशन परस्पेक्टिव द लाइन बिकम्स चिरात अभ्रश्य से श्रेय सो दैट अ फ्रॉम चिरात गेट्स एडजस्टेड विद द वर्ड भ्रश्य से विच मीन्स चिरात फॉर अ लॉन्ग लॉन्ग टाइम इटर्नल टाइम अभ्रश्य से मे यू नेवर फॉल डाउन फ्रॉम श्रेय फ्रॉम आर फिल्म so the curse was right now may you fall down from all opulence but in the glorification exact opposite just mother saraswati readjusted the syllable a uh. instead of achirat bhrashya se shriya she adjusted it to chirat bhrashya se shriya which means for a long long time eternal time may you have sutal lok which is full of opulence and may shri hari himself be your door keeper and give you all opulences of devotion this is my blessing <laughs> said uh, shukracharya so in this way we can see many many verses of shrimad bhagavatam go like this as acharyas interpret multiple meanings and this is what goes on here let's continue text 16 evam shaptasva guruna satyan na chalito mahan vamanaya dadau enam archit vodaka purvakam so in this way एवं शप्त शाप हुआ उन पर ही वॉज कर्स्ट बाय हुम स्व गुरुणा अपने ही गुरु महाराज ने उनको शाप दे दिया सुखदेव गोस्वामी वेन ई स्पीकिंग दिस ही इज फीलिंग बैड बिकॉज इन नेवर इन हिस्ट्री डू यू फाइंड एन एग्जाम्पल वेर द स्पिरिचुअल मास्टर इज पोर्टेंट द डिसाइपल इज सिंसियर एंड ओबीडियंट एंड द गुरु हिमसेल्फ इज कर्सिंग द डिसाइपल इट नेवर इज सीन सो सुखदेव गोस्वामी देर फॉर इंस्टेड ऑफ जस्ट सेंग गुरुणा शप्त दैट बली वॉज कर्स्ड बाई गुरु ही सेज एवं शप्त स्व गुरु न अपने ही गुरु ने उनको शाप दिया सो बाय एडिंग द वर्ड स्व सुखदेव गोस्वामी इज फीलिंग ऑफ साइडिंग विद बली महाराज इज सीन एंड लुक वॉट वर्ड ही से सत्यात न चलित महान बली महाराज वॉज सो ग्रेट दैट सत्यात न चलित ही डिंट मूव अवे फ्रॉम ट्रूथ इवन लिटल बिट he didn't move away from truth even little bit i'll give you a very very interesting example this is found in the words of vasudev maharaj in the 10th canto we know that <clears throat> when vasudev and devaki were getting married kamsa was personally carrying the service the carrying the order of the service of being the chariot driver right and we know the story at that time there is a akashwani there is a sound from the ether that the son of devaki will be the cause of your death so the acharyas explain why was there a celestial sound at that time because indra was scared the main reason why krishna is appearing is to prithvi bhara nasho mukunda to destroy kamsa but what is kamsa doing vaishnav seva <laughs> he, he is driving the chariot of krishna's devotees krishna's parents so what is krishna's uh, weak point service to the devotees if somebody serves the vaishnavas krishna's heart melts so indra started thinking that krishna is appearing to kill kamsa but before krishna is appearing kamsa is doing vaishnav seva prabhu kahe vaishnav seva naam sankirtan dui karo shigra bave krishna ra charan so indra started feeling scared kamsa if he performs vaishnav seva krishna's heart will melt and instead of speeding up to appear to kill him krishna will speed up to appear to accept him so what did indra do performed the service of akashwani so that now kamsa leaves that vaishnav seva kamsa leaves vaishnav seva and starts criticizing the same vaishnav whom he was serving in the form of holding the hair of devaki and this causes the downfall of kamsa krishna later comes and kills him the lesson for us is whenever we perform vaishnav seva however kamsa like we are we may all have opportunity to perform vaishnav seva and when we perform vaishnav seva akashwani always attacks us in the form of rumors do you know this vaishnav whom you are trying to serve he has a past 
before he came to iskon before he came to krishna consciousness oh he had uh, you know he had a slaughter house of his own or whatever <laughs> he would sell tickets on black at a movie theater or you know he had liquor store or whatever he, he used to sell meat something like that and then what happens immediately our faith in that vaishnava and that vaishnavi comes down and we think uh, really i never knew that okay maybe i'll not i will serve them but not with so much heart and what happens is because of the akashvani the sound of this ether around us in the form of rumors come and attacks our consciousness our faith in that vaishnav seva in service to that vaishnav is lost immediately and that same vaishnav whom we trying to serve now we try to attack in the form of holding their hair not literally holding their hair but we try criticizing them or we neglect them and that krishna who would have given us darshan will now punish us seeing that we are kamsa so i hope everybody is understanding another example that we can see is in the case of ravana ravana had association of hanuman mother sita also had association of hanuman by associating with hanuman mother sita got the embrace of ram and by associating with hanuman what did ravana get he was destroyed why because the mood in which both of them associated was different mother sita associated with hanuman with the desire to meet ram in service so when we associate with vaishnavas the desire to meet shri hari must increase but what did ravana do he set the tail of hanuman on fire and the tail is always behind it is not ahead and setting fire on the tail behind hanuman represents criticizing vaishnavas behind their back ram very mercifully gives the ravan like us opportunity to associate with hanuman like personalities and when we set fire on their tail in the form of criticizing behind their back definitely we will see ram in the form of death or reactions but it will not be the embrace that mother sita got it will be the destruction that ravan had you see very very important so coming to the point kamsa astray he goes astray by the ethereal sound of the akashvani and then he holds the hair of um, devaki rani and then at that point vasudev maharaj has to preach <laughs> think about when we have like a bhakti sangha uh, <laughs> platform where everybody is sitting and listening and we are also sitting and speaking it's comfortable but imagine when you have to give a class in the battlefield or an open place where a demon like kamsa is about he has raised his sword to kill his own sister who happens to be our wife what kind of preaching will we do krishna is such a great preacher is it not on the battlefield of kurukshetra he spoke to arjun in 40 minutes he spoke 700 verses vasudev maharaj bhagwan ke bhi baap hai to sochiye <laughs> unki vak shakti ka to kehna hi kya what to speak of his speaking ability Vasudev Maharaj is the father of the father of the creation Pita aham asya jagatah is Krishna and Vasudev is his father so whenever Krishna is called Vasudev it is a very pleasing name to the supreme lord that you are the son of that great personality another name for Vasudev Maharaj is Anaka Dunduvi you may have heard this name before in the bhagavatam Anaka Dunduvi Anaka Dunduvi means the ringing and the playing of instruments Why is his name Anaka Dundubi? Dundubi तो सब जानते हैं मानो एक ड्रम की तरह केटल ड्रम द मीनिंग इज देर वॉज अ फोर टेलिंग प्रोडिक्शन दट देर विल बी ए पर्सनैलिटी बाई द नेम वसुदेव हुज चाइल्ड विल बी श्री हरी हिमसेल्फ एंड हुल डिस्ट्रॉय द डीमेंस हु आर एनिमीज ऑफ इंद्रा सो वेन वसुदेव महाराज वॉज अपियरिंग डेमिगॉड्स वर प्लेइंग आनक धुंधुबी दे वर प्लेइंग द drums to say oh that vasudev is appearing now very soon he will become a father and the supreme lord will come as the son and all the demons will be destroyed so at whose birth time itself the demigod celebrated with drums that is vasudev maharaj anakadundvi so why i am mentioning that is vasudev maharaj at that point he has to speak and preach and whatever i'm speaking here as the the um the exit that we took uh, to explain this story is elaboration on this term satyat na chalitah mahan 
in this shloka we saw that bali maharaj did not move even an inch from truth so to elaborate that we are coming to the example of vasudev maharaj vasudev maharaj tries to speak in different ways but when nothing works when nothing works he speaks very interestingly to kamsa and he puts the now vasudev maharaj is the source of all sanskrit language so he puts it in such a way that o king whichever child whichever child you have fear from that child i will give it to you but he says it in a way that the exact opposite meaning grammatically is presented so he kamsa has to hear that child whom i have fear from will be given to me but vasudev maharaj he flips it using sanskrit grammar in such a way keeping his words as truth and pacifying comes at the same time by saying that those children that you have no problem with i will give you them exact opposite <laughs> and comes at doesn't understand because he hears it as that child whom i have a problem with i will get that child and that's what vasudev is trying to say but he is hiding through sanskrit grammar and exact opposite is what he is saying he is saying those children that you have no problem with is what i will give you and that child who you have a problem with i will not give you <laughs> but kamsa through sanskrit grammar doesn't understand this so he becomes very happy and he lets go of devaki <laughs> because this uh, point somebody could ask that if krishna is satyam param dhimahi his father must also be very truthful then how come he said i will give you all my children but he didn't give the eighth child he took him to gokul mahavan so it seems as if vasudev maharaj spoke lies but it is not so shila vishwana chakravarti thakur explains that vasudev maharaj tells kamsa externally kamsa is hearing that child whom you have a problem with whom you are afraid of i will give him to you but through sanskrit grammar vasudev maharaj is actually saying exact opposite <laughs> just like we saw previous verse where there was curse but at the same time blessing vasudev maharaj says that those children that you have no problem with i will give them to you which means that child whom you have a problem with krishna i will not give him to you and kamsa doesn't understand so vasudev maharaj speaks the truth but covers it up in such a way that the other person doesn't catch it hmm? so this is an elaboration on satyat na chalito mahan great personalities even at the time of great calamity they don't drift away from truth sometimes we may have to say the truth in a way that the other person doesn't understand it properly but you're speaking the truth <laughs> that is fine but the desire to lie and the desire to cheat and the desire to exploit and the desire to be crooked and duplicitous is not found in the vaishnava prabhupad writes in the purport in one of these verses in the section where he says that duplicity is something that the vaishnava doesn't have shila gaur gobind maharaj used to say saralta hi vaishnavata so sometimes you may have to say half the truth <laughs> another example is when the friends of krishna complain that krishna has eaten dirt hmm? so krishna says naham bhakshitava namba sarve mithya abhisamshina i have not eaten dirt they are all lying so acharyas takes two sides who is speaking the truth is krishna speaking the truth that he has not eaten dirt which means the friends are lying but the friends are pure vaishnavas how can they lie so if they are speaking the truth then krishna is lying but how can krishna lie because he is absolute truth so who is speaking false <laughs> the acharyas give reasons as to how krishna is truthful krishna says sarve mithya abhisamshina wo sab jhoot bol rahe they are all speaking lies that i have eaten so what it means is shila shridhar swami and others have commented by saying half truth is also false na so what are they saying i have eaten dirt but every day they are also eating fruits and vegetables where is it all coming from it's coming from the field so when they are eating some dirt is going into their mouth also but they are not telling you that they are telling you only the fact that i have eaten dirt which means they are telling you half the truth which means they are all speaking false <laughs> if everybody is eating dirt and i am also eating dirt then why complain <laughs> or another reason why they are speaking false krishna is saying the whole creation is in my mouth mother 
they are saying only half the truth that only dirt is in my mouth waters are water oceans are also in my mouth <laughs> sky is also in my mouth fire is also in my mouth in the future when i drink and sip fire i will show you oh mother everything is in my mouth but these friends are telling you only have the truth that mud is in his mouth but they are not telling you water is also in his mouth they are not telling you fire is also in the mouth so sarve mithya abhisamshinah krishna is saying all his friends are speaking lies because they are saying half the truth so sometimes in life <laughs> satyam bhruyat priyam bhruyat we have to speak the truth but we have to speak the truth anudvega karam vakyam satyam priya hitam it has to be in a way that it doesn't displease the other person sometimes people speak truth and they say jo hriday mein hai main bol deta whatever is in my heart i say kapat nahi hai i don't have duplicity but this is not right truth must be spoken in a palatable pleasing way it must be useful to the other person it should not agitate the other person anudvega karam vakyam the words must be non agitating satyam they must be truthful hitam they must be uh, beneficial for that person priyam they must be pleasing and swadhyaya vyasanam chaiva it must be in line with shastra so bali maharaj has all of that in his words he is not agitating uh, shukracharya through his words and he is keeping the truth he is doing it for his benefit and the benefit of others and this whole pastime is very pleasing and in line with shastra because even shukdev goswami is remembering this so satyat na chalitah even when there was trial and tribulation bali maharaj did not take one step away and therefore he is mahan and saying this vamanaya dadau enam enam means prithivim earth hmm? enam prithivim aham dadami vamanaya dadami Hmm? Bali Maharaj offered this whole Prithvi Vamanaya Dado. He gave it to Vaman Dev. And how did he do it? Architva. He first worshipped him and Udaka Purvakam. Then he took water in his palms to do Achman before he could give the whole world in charity. So we will stop at this point. We saw the very wonderful character and the steadfast devotional spirit of Bali Maharaj. when the time is right at another point we will continue and we will also see uh, different aspects of this past time how the three steps were taken and how wonderfully bali maharaj for all times to come gets celebrated as the greatest example of atma nivedanam or atma samarpan surrendering oneself so our nityananda prabhu in this section of chaitanya bhagavat is performing dramatic representation of all these past times teaching all of us that as much as possible our um enjoyment our gratification must be related to krishna whether as we are children or whether we are older um our gratification whatever relaxation um yukta ahara viharascha yukta chesta svakarmasu yukta svapna avabodascha krishna says that even the vihar the relaxation is necessary the sporting is necessary but nitananda prabhu teaches as much as possible to keep it krishna conscious and satvik pradhan predominated by satvagun so we pause here thank you all for kindly participating please forgive me if i displeased you in any way if i said something which was um not adhering to truth <laughs> and if there was anything that pleased your heart um i am simply repeating the words of shila prabhupada and our gurujan and ultimately shukadev goswami so this is their hari katha it is the ganga of their hari katha flowing to the through the lotus of their lips but we are all fortunate ones in the prayag kshetra of bhakti sangha we all come together to take the bath in the ganga water of the lord's glories vansha kalpa trubhyasch kripa sindhu bya evacha patitanam pavanebhyo vaishnavebhyo namo namaha ananta koti gaur bhakta vrind ki jay shila prabhu pad ki jay gaur premanande